Assalamualaikum Hi guys Ini adalah video terakhir untuk chapter 8 Di mana kita akan fokus last subtopic iaitu phenol So dalam video ini kita akan belajar tentang How to compare the acidity of phenol Alcohol and water And after that you got a few chemical reactions of phenols With reference to several of the reactions And kita juga akan belajar tentang identification test Atau nama lain dia yang biasa kita dengar adalah chemical test First thing first, let's focus about acidity of phenol, alcohols and water So phenol dia special sebab dia adalah aromatic alcohol Apabila kita ingin bandingkan acidity between three of them We should know that all of them acts as a six by donating the proton menggunakan cleavage OH bond. So apa-apa sahaja yang stabilize the conjugate base akan memberikan asid itu lebih acidity. Okay, let's say kita dah belajar ionic equilibria dalam SEM 1. Saya hanya akan recap semula. Let's talk about HA. This is acid. HA ni reacts dengan water. Bila kita ionize dalam water, the acid will dissociate into H3O plus dan juga A minus. So yang mana satu acid, this is our acid. Dan awak akan dapat hydronium ion. This is our hydronium ion. Ataupun nama lain dia adalah hydrozonium ion. Sama saja. And the last one kita ada A minus. A minus ni datang daripada dissociation of acid. So apa-apa yang dissociate daripada asid dia akan jadi term conjugate base. So I hope you still remember about this one, conjugate base. So anything that stabilize the conjugate base here akan menyebabkan asid ini lebih acidic. So apabila stability of conjugate base awak tinggi, maknanya stability itu makin tinggi, acidity pun akan jadi lebih tinggi. So, itu yang awak kena tahu. Next, we go for factors that affect the acidity of substance. Let's say we have two factors. Factors yang pertama adalah resonance effect. Sekiranya compound itu boleh buat resonance structure, maknanya dia lebih acidic. Next one, factor inductive effect. Inductive effect awak dah biasa dengar, this is always talk about EDG and EWG. For acidity, Acidity akan menurun apabila awak ada EDG. Alkyl group biasanya yang akan jadi EDG. Tetapi apabila awak ada EWG, acidity akan makin bertambah. So itu secara general. Now we focus more when you have three different compounds that we are discussing right now, phenol, alcohols and water. Ketiga-tiga ini adalah very weak acid. Sebab tu, bila dia reacts dengan water, awak kena gunakan reversible arrow. And then, dia akan dissociate menjadi phenoxide ion untuk phenol, hydroxide ion untuk water dan ethoxide ion untuk alcohol. Let's say saya ambil alcohol saya ethanol. So, semuanya kita akan reacts dengan water. Cuma special sikit, water reacts dengan water. Cuma, dan dia akan hasilkan ion yang paling penting iaitu H3O+, hydronium ion. Seterusnya, awak akan hasilkan phenoxide ion untuk phenol. Bentuk dia adalah benzene ring attached to O-. So, maknanya dekat sini kita buang H+, kat sini. Sebab asid dia donates the proton. Same goes for H2O, dia donates the proton daripada H2O kita ada H plus dan OH minus, yang tinggal adalah OH minus. So H plus akan bergabung dengan H2O lagi satu untuk jadi H3O plus. And last one kita ada alcohol, kita akan buang H plus yang tinggal CH3, CH2O minus. Dan H plus kat sini akan bergabung dengan water jadi hydronium ion. So saya harap semua orang tahu how to do the equation for alcohols for water and for phenol when it is ionized with water to dissociate becomes hydronium ion and ion dekat sini and then bila kita nak lihat acidity acidity bergantung kepada nilai conjugate base awak so kita akan lihat nilai Ka Ka awak makin tinggi pH awak akan tinggi 
this stronger acid. If you take a look here, the most acidic adalah phenol kerana nilai Ka dia paling tinggi. So why phenol is the most acidic? Kita akan talk about ion yang terhasil. So ion yang terhasil apabila kita dissociate dengan water adalah OH- untuk water, RO- untuk alkohol dan phenoxide ion untuk phenol. Untuk phenol, dia phenoxide ion ni lebih stable berbanding ion yang lain kerana delocalization of electrons in the ion. So ini adalah ion sebab ada charge negatif. So ion ni dia akan delocalize the electron daripada negative charge dia alternate dengan double bond. So sebab itulah phenoxide ion daripada phenol is the most stable hence the acidity is the highest. Untuk RO- ini datang daripada alkohol yang telah disosiat dengan water. So dia adalah yang paling least stable due to the presence of alkyl group iaitu R. R macam yang saya mention tadi akan destabilize the alkoxide ion. R bila ada dalam compound dia akan menyebabkan acidity itu makin rendah. So let's talk about phenol. As we know, phenol is the most stable because phenoxide ion is stable. Kenapa? Because acidity of the phenol bergantung kepada negative charge on the oxygen atom. Yang mana? Yang ini. So this negative charge, dia boleh delocalize dengan cara dia berikan elektron kepada this bond, double bond akan pergi kepada carbon. And then, jadi negatif dekat carbon ni, and double bond antara carbon and oxygen. Dan dia akan alternate, alternate, alternate again and again menjadi resonance structure. Dan awak akan dapat empat resonance structure. Pastikan simbol double headed arrow diletakkan antara resonance structures yang awak lukis in square bracket. Benda yang paling penting awak kena faham dekat sini adalah negative charge akan menjadi bond. Double bond akan pergi kepada carbon atom. Bukan pergi antara carbon atom. Dia pergi kepada carbon atom. Like this one. Dia pergi kepada carbon atom dekat sini. Ini pun sama. Pergi dekat carbon atom dekat sini. Same goes here. Dekat sini. So, apabila dia pergi dekat carbon atom, carbon atom tu ada banyak elektron sebab tu charge dia negatif. And then, untuk double bond, and then dia akan alternate one another di mana negative charge akan buat double bond. So ingat ini konsep untuk draw the resonance structure for phenoxide ion. Now kita masuk chemical properties of phenol. Kita ada dua chemical reaction. Chemical reaction yang pertama adalah reaction with sodium. It is very similar to aliphatic alcohol yang awak sudah belajar where we have sodium metal is our reagent phenol starting material kita. Apa yang terjadi, kita akan donate the proton. That's why O- akan attract Na plus daripada Na. And then, awak akan hasilkan H2. H2 ni datang daripada another phenol. Bayangkan kita ada dalam satu container lebih daripada satu phenol. So, satu phenol, each phenol akan bagi proton. So, proton itu akan berkumpul menjadi hydrogen molecules. Dan pastikan awak balancekan equation sebab kat sini ada satu je hydrogen, kita akan tambah satu per dua dekat depan. And make sure you emphasize the face of hydrogen is gas. Ataupun kalau awak nak guna anak panah ke atas pun tak ada masalah. Gas. So you produce sodium phenoxide as the main product. This one side product. Next kita ada reaction with sodium hydroxide. Beza sekarang kita ada NaOH. Apabila phenol dissolve in water, dia hanya slightly soluble. Tapi dia boleh completely dissolve in sodium hydroxide. Reagent yang kita gunakan adalah aqueous NaOH. Dan ini adalah reaction yang biasanya kita gunakan untuk jadi chemical test apabila awak nak distinguish between aliphatic alcohol and phenol. Apa maksud aliphatic alcohol? Apa-apa OH group yang attach kepada alkyl group itu adalah aliphatic alcohol. Contoh saya ambil ethanol dengan phenol. Dua-dua reacts dengan NaO. Untuk aliphatic alcohol, dia tidak akan hasilkan reaction. So sebab tu dekat bahagian produk awak tulis no observable changes. Tapi untuk phenol, konsep yang sama 
kita akan donate the proton that's why O- akan attract Na+ dan selebihnya akan menjadi H2O sebagai side product. For the reaction of phenol, dia akan hasilkan main product yang sama iaitu sodium phenoxide. So kita dah siap belajar tentang dua chemical reactions of phenol. Mari kita masuk dua chemical test untuk phenol. Saya pernah mention before this, chemical test for the phenol is very special. Let's focus with the first one. Reaction with FeCl3. So ini adalah iron 3 chloride. Iron 3 chloride adalah reagent yang kita gunakan untuk buat chemical test so that we can determine the presence of phenol in the structure. So the reagent is FeCl3 aqueous. Wajib tulis perkataan aqueous. And then the observation that you can get is purple complex solution is formed. Sekarang saya akan tunjukkan macam mana kita nak tulis equation untuk this chemical test. Benda pertama awak kena lukis benzene ring. Tapi benzene ring yang awak wajib lukis adalah dalam bentuk bulat dekat tengah-tengah. Jangan guna double bond. Kenapa? Sebab kita perlu hasilkan kompleks. Kompleks dia ada cara dia di mana FeCl3 tu akan attach masuk tengah-tengah antara structure benzene dekat sini. Sebab tu better awak lukis bulat dekat dalam awak punya benzene ring bukan double bond and then after that kita lukis phenol so ada OH and then plus with FeCl3 aqueous FeCl3 warna dia adalah yellow solution apabila dia undergo chemical test with the reaction of iron 3 chloride Awak akan hasilkan produk awak iaitu purple complex solution. How you want to draw that? Lukis dulu phenol macam biasa. And then this phenol akan attach kepada complex FeCl3. So saya akan gunakan warna yang berbeza. Saya akan mulakan daripada tengah tarik macam tu. And then attach kepada FeCl3. So this is our product. Dan ini adalah positif result untuk reaction with FeCl3. Apa yang kita panggil for this structure, this is our purple complex. So settle for the first chemical test. Alright, the last one. This is the last chemical test. Reaction with bromine water. The purpose is just the same as reaction with FeCl3 because we want to identify the presence of phenol in our molecule. So the reagent that you have to use because of the bromine water, you need bromine and water. You can also replace bromine water as in Br2 in aqueous phase. It is also acceptable. So the observation for this reaction, when you have bromine, the color is reddish brown color. It is decolorized. And after a few seconds, you can see that white precipitate is formed. So how you want to write the equation? So the equation is you start with the phenol and then plus with Br2. And then your Br2 must coming with H2O. So this is bromine water. Or you can also write it down as Br2 aqueous. Nothing above the arrow. Also acceptable. So let's get into this reaction. What happened? If you realize here, this is the cyclic ring. You have the first carbon here. So I'm going to label the numbering for the carbon at the ring. And then you go down, follow the sequence. What I want you to focus, the reaction will happen at second carbon where you have hydrogen here, at the fourth carbon and at the sixth carbon. So you have three hydrogens at each carbon that I mentioned here. So this is where the reaction, let's say you imagine in one container we have phenol molecules and we have bromine molecules. So what happened, bromine molecule will substitute the position of hydrogen here. So how many hydrogen here? At second, fourth and sixth carbon, we have three hydrogen atoms. So it's going to be substitute with Br2. So you have to draw your phenol back same as before phenol but right now at the second carbon you have br at the fourth carbon you have br and at the sixth carbon you have br as well 
This is what we call as 2,4,6 dash tribromophenol. So what happened originally the reaction is in reddish brown color of the solution because we add bromine water. After a while you can see that white precipitate form. So which product is referring to the white precipitate? This product is the white precipitate. So you have to know this reaction is very special because you are going to substitute Br at the three carbon atoms. And this is white precipitate. So that's all from me. I hope you are clear how to identify the presence of phenol by using the two chemical tests here. Reaction with FeCl3 to get the purple complex or reaction with bromine water to get the white precipitate. And you also know how to determine the reaction of phenol. We got two of it. The first one reaction with sodium and the reaction with sodium hydroxide. Both of them are going to form the main product which is sodium phenoxide. So that's it for this video. We are done with chapter alcohols. I will see you in the next video for the next chapter. Till then, bye!